what's up guys it's morgan and angie from the shift from people pleasing to empowered connection today we are talking about suppression and are you feeling suppressed by your spouse first i want to start off with our definition of depression me and angie wrote a definition for you guys um and it's this when we feel trapped in our inner world we can't express what we truly think and feel and we feel incapable of getting our needs and wants met. That is our definition of suppression. So Angie, do you have a story or an example that you'd like to share with everyone with regards to feeling suppressed by a spouse or a partner? Yes. <clears throat> so when I was, I was, this is my second marriage. So when I was married to my first husband, um, and by the way, we get along now, just so you guys know that, but when we were married, I felt really suppressed and I felt suppressed in so many ways. And one of the ways was with my friendships. It just seemed as if however we interacted that he would create, I, again, I felt this way at the time that he would create drama with my friends and it estranged them from me. So they really didn't feel like hanging out with me. And so a lot of my friendships sort of just dropped by the wayside. And with my church, there was such criticism of me being involved in my church every time I'd come home from church. And he would say, you have such a childish dependence on God. And so there was a lot of cynicism and criticism there. And yeah. I ended up leaving. And I ended up just, I wrote a letter and I left that supportive community that that was meeting a need for me of connection. You left your, your church because of his criticism is what you're saying. Yeah. Because yeah. it just got to be too much. Every yeah. time I'd come home, there was this criticism and this negativity about it. Wow. That must've been really hard. It was because it was a, a source of support for me. And then that, went away and it made me feel good about myself by being involved in committees and helping and so forth. So, so I left the church. Uh, I just remember one of the final straws was when he tried limiting my ability to see my mom. Yeah. And, and I just thought, what? She's my mother. And you're, are you jealous of my mom? You know, there was a lot of yeah. think, insecurity about me spending time with other people. And so that was a big thing for me. Um, let's see. Oh, my body. Like there was a lot of criticism about how I looked. Very personal attacks on my physical appearance, my weight, or mm -hmm. mostly it was around my weight. And, uh, and I just, I, I took that in. It, it cut me to a core. I believed a lot of the negative stuff. So probably my biggest suppression was the fact that we had a daughter together who had special needs, cystic fibrosis. And I wanted out, like I wanted out of the marriage. I, I felt, I felt bullied and I didn't feel like I can really be myself and who I was. And so I asked for a divorce. And when that happened, he pretty much said over my dead body, you know, he wasn't going to give that to me. And I wanted joint custody. And what I ended up doing was I ended up caving and I didn't even get a lawyer of my own. And I ended up giving him custody of our daughter who wasn't even two years old, who wasn't quite yet two. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a real wake up call for me, you know, like how could I have done that? And so the suppression there was for me to believe that I wasn't somehow worthy or deserving of being her mother because I was the one that wanted out of the marriage. Yeah. Wow. That, that seriously cuts so deep. And I appreciate you sharing such a deep challenge that you've had because this in so many ways shaped your life in very powerful ways. Like going from that kind of being bullied and, and isolated from your friends and your community to saying, wait a second, this isn't what I want. Um, anyway, so continue and, and, tell, and tell us, you know, what that transition was like, you know, stepping out of 
being told to be a certain way or feeling like you had to be a certain way for him to saying, you know what, I'm done with that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, well, it was very empowering for me. And even though it was the hardest time of my life, it was also the most freeing time of my life. Yeah. And it, it took many years for me to realize what I'm about to tell you. I, I, I had no clue back then. I just know that I, I was fighting from, from me for liberation of me. Yeah. And, and at times I felt guilty about that mm. and very, very, very guilty because otherwise I wouldn't have given him custody. Yeah. But years later, what I realized was that I was over protecting him mm. more over my daughter. It's, it's insane. Like it makes, yeah. it, it didn't make any sense to me then. Later on, I began to realize, oh yeah, as a people pleaser, I have that overprotecting trait about me. And in this case, I was overprotecting my husband um, who didn't need my overprotecting. My daughter needed my overprotecting, yeah. but my mind was so just not clear about that. I was in victim mode. I was being a very, a very big victim, you know, and I'm not saying yeah. that to beat myself up. Um, I'm just saying it as out of awareness that when I felt suppressed by him in so many areas that it was because I did feel victimized by life and by him in particular. And so, yeah, I was over protecting him over my own daughter, that over responsibility. Right. Well, and it makes sense that when you feel like a victim, you end up feeling like you're not empowered, you know, because right. you yeah, it's like the opposite of empowerment. But even in that victimhood, you were slowly stepping out of it more and more because the fact that you were asking for the divorce was showing that you were stepping into, you know, more empowerment. And and it only got more and more from there as you got more, more healing and more help. Yes. And I ended up getting my daughter back um, without having to go to court uh, when she was 13. It did take 11 years. Yeah. Um, but I didn't start trying until she was 11 and expressed that interest. And then interestingly enough, and this is truly an empowerment story, I helped her to learn how to visualize and to tap and meditate at 11. And she was doing these things. And I told her, honey, if you visualize this and I visualize this, then we're going to make it happen together. So as a team, yeah. we got her back and we were both empowered through the whole process. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing so deeply into your soul with us. And I, and I can say that because I know you very well. I know you're sharing very deeply right now and I appreciate that. And, and um, I know the viewers will appreciate it too. And I, I would say if you could go back to yourself, you mm -hmm. know, in your twenties during that first marriage, what tip would you give yourself while you were going through that? Because there's a lot of other people that are feeling suppressed in their marriages or in their relationships. What would you actually, say? I actually just did this. Um, I went back to that 28 year old, 27 year old, almost 28 year old. And I, and I gave her some compassion. And, and what I would say, the tip for today is that you do not have to overprotect your suppressor. And the reason is because you deserve to be happy and to be free and whatever that looks like for you, you deserve that. And if someone tries to tell you that you're selfish because you're asking for your needs and wants to be met, consider the source. Is it your life coach <laughs> or is it somebody who has a lot to gain by leveraging you and manipulating you? Um, now that's not, Again, that sounds kind of like victimy language. And next week, we're going to go much more into your own experience. Okay. Um, but that's what I would say. You don't have to overprotect your suppressor. You know, you don't have to be the doormat. You are worthy and deserving of love and freedom right now. Yeah. And I would say what that might look like in someone's life, because not everyone has as a traumatic experience as you do. But 
um, simply what that might look like is for someone to say like, oh, I really like going to this painting class. And maybe their spouse teases them about it. Like, oh, pay, you're not a painter or whatever. And, and you say, oh, well, yes, I am. And, and you go to the class, you know, you go do that thing that, that you want to do. And you don't let, um, you, you just don't let them get in the way of that just from whatever, you know, whatever insecurities they have. Because when it comes down to it, if they're trying to suppress you, it's usually because they're very insecure themselves. Right. And they're suppressing their own needs. But yeah. 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 We'll talk about that next week. Right, Morgan? Yes, absolutely. Um, any other final thoughts on all of that that you shared before we close this video? Just the, the, the ones that you're supposed to be in relationship with are the ones that are going to stick around and that, that are meant to be. You know, it's like our tribe will show up as right. we as we heal ourselves and our tribe will stay with us. Yeah. When we heal, when we, when we stand up and say, I am going to go to that art class or I am going to go to that church. Right? So right. yeah, don't be afraid of losing someone in your life because if you lose them out of being yourself, then you didn't want them around in the first place. Right. And, you know, hopefully more often than not, we don't lose people when we heal, but, but that they start to respect, um, our boundaries better. So, yeah. So this has been an awesome video. Angie, thank you again for sharing so deeply. Um, thank you all for watching. Please comment down below, like how you might be feeling suppressed in your marriage or with your partner and what ways do you, you know, want to start to step into who you really are. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And we will see you guys next time. This has been Morgan and Angie from People Pleasing to Empowered Connection. And we'll uh, see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye.